All right, guys, we're here with the one and only Halsey. Now, can I tell you, as a lesbian and a host of the first LGBTQ national radio station, I want to thank you so much for using your platform to so openly talk about your sexuality and really normalizing it. It's such a big deal. I have to tell you that Without Me was the number one requested song on Channel Q for months. Yes. But I do want to ask you, did you receive any pushback when you came out as bisexual? Um, you know, I think it's funny because, you know, one of the things I talk about really frequently as uh, as an artist and as someone in the public eye is like, I think one thing everyone in the LGBT community can relate to is like, you're never done coming out. Yeah. You're just kind of always coming out. Yeah. So like, I was out in high school and I was really lucky to have like an amazing mother who was like super, super supportive. I was out in high school and then once I started making music, I kind of never... It was never not part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was always, always openly bi and I'd always talked about it. And I want to say like, for the most part, everyone in like the industry side of things is like overwhelmingly supportive. Yeah. Great. But you know, there is like in the beginning, I think my first real like major label music video ever um, features me in an intimate relationship with another woman. And that was like out the gate. I was like, this is my video I want to make. Yeah. And like everyone at my label obviously was like, cool, this is amazing. But then there were some people who were like, ooh, like, is she sure she wants to do that? Yeah. Like, well, and I was like, I think maybe it was my own na- naivety, but I was just like, yeah, why wouldn't I? Well, you're so authentic and you're so real with everybody, which is why I think people fall in love with you. Um, but it's May, which is Mental yes. Health Awareness Month. We talk about this so much. I've talked about it with my own personal struggles. People mm-hmm. in our community do. Can you talk to us about your struggle with mental health and how you have overcome those darker times and continue to? For sure. I think, like, you know, one of the things that I like to remind myself is that you know the journey to well I mean the ex- your experiences with mental health are a journey not a destination yeah. like I used to think that one day I was going to arrive at happy and just stay there yeah. like all right cool I'm good now you know what I mean all I got to do is work really hard to get to happy and then I will stay at happy and it's like that's not true it's a it's a constant constant battle which seems discouraging um but I think that the one thing I like to always remind myself is like your struggle will never get better. It will just always get different and you will get more equipped to handling it. Yeah. And music has obviously been like a, a outrageous outlet for me to the point where I like I kind of even like forget it or don't realize it until I haven't been on tour for a while and I start to get really down. And I'm like, you know, why, what's going on with me? What's what am I going through right now? And I realize it's because I haven't been on stage yeah you know I haven't been doing the thing that makes me feel safe and makes me feel powerful and makes me feel good about myself and I think that music is kind of a battle between you get trapped between being numb and being mindful where sometimes everything can be happening so fast you're traveling you're playing shows you're doing interviews meet your da, 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 that you can get kind of numb because you're just trying to make sure you can do your best But then on the flip side, there's this part of it that's like so mindful where you're just feeling everything that's happening all the time. You know, you interact with so many people in a day and so many of my fans, majority of my fans are members of the community and they remind me every day like why I'm proud to be just proud to get on stage. (laughs) I'm just proud to have them. And Sometimes they tell me, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes they tell me stories that make me like, you know what, like either A, like what I'm going through isn't that bad in comparison. I know pain is relative, but like, you know, it's a nice little wake up call. But then the flip side, you know, getting to help them and getting to talk to them is what ultimately helps me. Yeah. And it makes me want to be, makes you want to be strong for them. But I think like the this biggest thing to remember with mental health is it's not a destination, it's a continuous journey. Well, I love that. Now, on a lighter note, speaking of your fans and music, yes. girl, you're quite the tease, Henny, because when you were making uh, the <laughs> announcement that you were releasing new music, yes. you took everyone on a musical, lyrical scavenger I hunt. Know. Talk to us about Nightmare. So I always love kind of like injecting myself into my fans' world, you know, like instead of making them come to me, I like going to them, which is why we do like the scavenger hunts and the hidden you know lyrics and the hidden artwork and all that stuff nightmare is really exciting for me 
um, I, you know, I put out two albums and didn't really care about having music on the radio. And then all of a sudden my music was on the radio. Yeah. And it was like, now or never, bad at love, alone, him and I, east side, closer, boy with love, 11 minutes blah, 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 without me. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah it was, was crazy. And I was so excited. It was so amazing. I was like, wow, this is really happening. But then, you know, I'm in the studio making my third album and now I have a new thing I'm thinking about. I've never made an album thinking about having songs on the radio before. And now I'm in the studio thinking like, oh no, like, what am I going to do Like, if they don't play this on the radio? Biggest thing was the wake-up call of, uh, you need to not care because yeah. you've never thought about that while you were making music before. That's not what's important to you. So it was that reality check, that wake up call of like b- before I even started, it was like, check yourself. Yeah. Don't make music for that. Um, and I think for me also, you know, obviously getting new fans from the radio. Um, a lot of people, I think, know me for my more like glittery, emotional, you know, melodic pop songs. And then they come to the shows And they realize that I have albums full of B-sides that are like angry and aggressive and dark and weird. Which we love, honey. We love. I love them too. But then, you know, they're like, why is the Now or Never girl wearing a ski mask and fishnets and climbing into the crowd? You're really empowering Mm. women during a time where we all really need to be empowered. A hundred percent. I want to ask you, in a social climate where women's rights and LGBTQ rights are really being challenged, What is the best way, particularly now that we're in pride season as well, Mm -hmm. that we can or how you would like people to spread the message of love and acceptance? I think it's most I think the most important thing to do before you spread a message is to listen to a message. I think everyone is so worried about what they have to say that they're not listening to what other people have to say, you know, which I think is really important. I've learned so much in this journey of making music about thinking outside of my own perspective. You know what I mean? Like. Obviously, like, my own struggles are my own struggles. Um, But in this process, in my career, I've met incredible Muslim fans in the Middle East. And I've met incredible fans fighting for abortion rights in Argentina. And I've met incredible fans, you know, fighting for the LGBT community in Brazil when they're overcoming, like, a new government. I've met fans in Tokyo who are looking to take back their sexual autonomy in a culture that they feel suppresses it or fetishizes it. Um, I've met people from all over the world, and I've seen everybody's nuanced struggle and nuanced experience and so for me I was like before I open my mouth and start talking I need to shut up and start listening you know what I mean that was the first thing I love that um and I think that that's really important because I think having a voice is is important but I think being an ear and being a shoulder is also important so like while we're all up in arms and angry and passionate about our own struggles don't steamroll somebody else's in the process because you're so passionate about yours. Well, let me tell you that we're all listening to you. Thank you so much for using your thank platform you. the way that you have. We love you. You always have a home at Channel Q. And thank, thank you. you so much. Nightmare is amazing. You can get it everywhere. Thank you, Halsey. We love you, babe. Thank you, guys.